Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Catholic Mass at St. Henry Catholic Church in our humble fireside chapel. My name is Father Charles Sock. Our reader is Peggy, Joe and Barb are our musicians, and Jim, as usual, is our sacristan, videographer, and usher. And so give him a pat on the back. He doesn't do it enough for himself. <laughs> I didn't know so many of you survived the winter storm. It's good to see you all. We give thanks to God for providence and for loving care. And we'll keep in mind all of those who continue to suffer from digging out of this frozen tundra, very unusual for us. As we call to mind our sins, we ask for God's loving mercy. God through this yearly observance of Holy Lent that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I'm giving for all the ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all the living things so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which only a few persons, eight in all, were saved through the water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First chapter of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. As children, we certainly were caught up in the story of Noah, the big flood, many camp songs relate to Noah and the floody floody. Noah appealed to God, he had quite a good relationship with God to save the earth. And the people. God relented and said, I will save those who are faithful. It ended, ended up being eight. And a number of animals, two by two, as he built his arky barky. And then the floods came. Prior to that, they were all laughing at Noah for building his ark on dry land. The floods lasted a long time. And finally, the earth cleared. And that's where we come into the reading today. God speaks to Noah. 
and says, I will not ever devastate the world again by water. And as a sign of my love and providence, I will place a bow in the sky. We call it a rainbow. Mm -hmm. But the early primitive Hebrews saw the bow as related to bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. The primitive people saw the God as one who would show wrath by shooting an arrow out of the bow to devastate those who were unfaithful. And so the bow is God's weapon hung up into the sky, not to fire an arrow again to flood the, the world. For us, it's a sign of God's providence and loving protection. It's a covenant. Remember those covenants? The first one was with Adam and Eve, and then with Abraham and Sarah, then with Noah, later Moses and David, and the final covenant is sending his own son to maintain us being faithful by fighting sin and death. And so in the gospel today, we very early on in Mark's gospel find Jesus going out into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by Satan. Then his mission began after he came out of the desert. The angels had ministered to him and his message was very clear. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus invites us every year for 40 days to join him in the desert to fight sin and death. On Ash Wednesday, a very popular day for many Christians, we're anointed with an imposition of ash on our heads. Remember, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. That puts in perspective what we are to do for 40 days, to think of things eternal and to prepare for things eternal. And the other line we hear associated with the imposition are Jesus' own words, repent and believe in the gospel. So here we have another opportunity Noah tells us how to develop a relationship and what the consequences are for those who are faithful. Our opportunity during 40 days is to develop and increase our relationship with God. Jesus shows the way. It's like when he came to Levi in the customs post. Levi, who was a tax collector for the Romans, he was reviled by his own countrymen because he was a traitor. He was constantly put down as a major sinner. Who could possibly love him, much less call him? Jesus does. And Levi left his customs posts and follow Jesus. And he asked Jesus to come to his house that evening for dinner. The Pharisees and scribes were there complaining that Jesus is eating with sinners. By the way, that's us too. He eats and cavorts with sinners. Who else? could do that. Jesus does. And then we ask ourselves as we join Jesus into the desert for 40 days, what is in my heart? 
Wouldn't it be nice if we not only said it, but it was real? Jesus is in my heart. Jesus is the one that calls me out of my customs posts. Our problems, our projects that we worry about, our finances, our health, our family concerns, whatever they might be, Jesus summons us to be liberated. That's what Jesus does. That's what Lent is about. To spend 40 days in the desert, yes, tempted by Satan, but ministered by angels. The angels, surprisingly enough, are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, charitable works. So we concentrate on this ash that was placed on our forehead and symbolically placed on all the foreheads of Christians throughout the world. It's a very primitive, primal sign. Ashes on my head. Even other ministers of other faiths are placing ashes. You might see them at a train station or at a mall on Ash Wednesday. It's something that strikes us as being necessary to get into the flow of these 40 days. Prayer. What opportunities are we taking as a family, as an individuals? We try to set up something in the parish, even during COVID, where we pray every Friday. Six o'clock, we have confessions, reconciliation. Seven o'clock is exposition of the Blessed Sacrament with Stations of the Cross. Every day, you can catch live stream the Mass. There's a lot of opportunities for prayer if you go on the website and just look at what Deacon Larry has provided all kinds of inspirational videos. Take a look. Find something to read. We have a beautiful library. Once we get it opened again, we'll let you know. Ways of Praying, Lexio. But there's something else which is three times praying. It's called fasting. It's curbing our appetites road rage and anger, depression, the appetites that detract us from spending time with Jesus and developing that relationship with God, we have to all admit we have distractions. We need to fast from some things like TV, the internet, you name it, there's something we need to do, but curbing our appetites is called fasting. And then while we're at the prayer and fasting, it would be nice to tie that together with charitable works. Charitable works, there's so many opportunities. And that's where we open our eyes during Lent. Open our eyes to see the needs of our brothers and sisters. We have the beautiful eight corporal works of mercy and the eight spiritual works of mercy where we can start. We have a lot of wonderful service organizations in our parish. If you're involved in them, get even more active. Take a look and see where you might be called. I have some good news. There's 36 days left to accomplish it. I have some bad news for those who haven't accepted it. You've got 36 days left to Lent. Noah reminds us, as does the bow in the sky, 
God wants us to defeat, and Jesus guides us, both sin and death, as we prepare ultimately for the Paschal mystery. And that's not far off, Holy Week and Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand as we recite our Apostles' Creed together. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With absolute faith, in his father Jesus overcame temptation with the same confidence we lift up our own prayers that all who claim Jesus Christ as their Savior summon the strength and courage to walk with him on the path of holiness we pray to the Lord Lord, Lord hear our prayer that political leaders avoid temptations of power and greed and serve with sincere generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For pregnant women in need of assistance and for the volunteer organizations, including pregnancy resource centers and maternity homes that seek to calm their fears and provide for their needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Lenten fast will include fasting from harsh words and divisive actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and those suffering with painful illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the prayers of our hearts are heard and answered. We pray for all of the sick of our parish and those suffering from body, mind, and spirit, especially Angie Eckroff, who fell on Ash Wednesday and broke her hip. May they all find healing through Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you never abandon those who need you. Help us to recognize your love in our daily lives and follow your holy path in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings 
for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed. Though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race, Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis our Pope and Alexander and Peter our bishops. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Henry and Cunegunda and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing with you with gladness in thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a sign of peace.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please remain seated for the communion prayer. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope is increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. This always happened in my classroom years ago when I was a principal. When I said, remain seated, they would go, oh no, he's going to go on and on. I'll try not to go on and on. Uh, some good news, we have arranged a mission evening for Lent. And so on Saturday, March 20, after this Mass, we will meet in church, and there will be a presentation by your beloved pastor, introducing two presenters, one who will be Spanish-speaking and the other that will be English-speaking, and will break into two groups, the Spanish staying one place, English another. The theme is the attitudes of the new evangelization in our parish. That's an absolute necessity since I've heard COVID is supposed to subside sometime before the third millennium. Yeah. So we hope to be prepared because a lot of folks have uh, not disappeared, but they have had a struggle to re-engage with our parish. So that's the purpose of the mission. Father Guillermo Amechi, a Jesuit, and Father Pedro Artiaga, who is a missionary of the Holy Spirit, will be our presenters. So there'll be more about it later. Uh, it's going to close with adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So uh, you'll be home by midnight. No, we'll be done by 9, 9.30. Also, uh, we have been asked to arrange our accounting practice a little better between the parish and St. Vincent de Paul. So the Archdiocese is, is saying, in the future you can go ahead and make your check out directly to St. Vincent de Paul and put it into the collection, but there will no longer be an envelope in, the, in your box. Does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. We need to keep it separate and that will help clean it up. So continue to be generous to the great work St. Vincent de Paul is doing. Uh, confession is at three o'clock every Saturday, and please come as early as you can, and then when we're finished, we're finished at 3.30 or four. We have confession every Friday at six o'clock in the church preceding the holy hour and stations at seven. Uh, we had our first one this Friday, it went very well. A reminder, if you are have any sniffles, sore throat, or not feeling well, stay home. Yeah. That's just general good safety. Uh, it's time to take care of each other and to keep distance six feet apart. That's difficult when you leave, but if you'd like, if you're in a hurry, you can go out this hallway and out that door to the main parking lot, but do be six feet from the family unit in front of you. We tend to be a herd of turtles, and that's not safe, okay? Um, concerning the church, we're having troubles already with people bringing food and snacks and hot coffee and water and spilling it already. So please refrain and ask your neighbor to also leave all drinks outside. We've already spilled coffee and we also have a burn hole already in our uh, new carpet. So oh, no. it will work. You just don't want to get me into a complaint mode. <laughs> That's not me, right? Um, be especially careful during the next six weeks. We have many, many uh, trades finishing the Welcome Center. It is moving fast. We hope to be finished, at least be able to walk through the Welcome Center by Easter and Holy Week. Uh, they're going as fast as they can. It is going to be wonderful. Thank you again for your patience and for your generosity. Let us stand. <clears throat> and we bow our heads. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit.
May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to give glory and praise to God. Oh, my God.